As Title 42 comes to an end, the influx of migrants is stretching far beyond the southern border, the straining resources across the country, in fact, as NBC News senior national correspondent Tom Yama shows us. A number of major cities are also feeling the impact. In El Paso, many residents are fed up, saying their city has been taken over. And I understand that everybody wants a better future, but they're taking our taxes, they're taking everything from us. And the issue is not just impacting the border. In Chicago, immigrants are sleeping in a police station. In Denver, it's a parking garage overwhelming this intake center. There's nowhere else for these these refugees to go. In New York City, Mayor Eric Adams, a Democrat, now at war with the suburbs where he's shipping migrants to hotels, blaming the Biden administration for the city running out of shelter space. The national government has turned its back on New York City. And joining me now is David Miliband, president and CEO of the International Rescue Committee and the former British Foreign Secretary. David, you're just back from visiting the border in Arizona. What did you see and hear from your staff and from the migrants they're helping there? Good afternoon, Andrea. I've been in Phoenix. The story there shows that migration can be managed. It can be managed in a humane and efficient way as long as the appropriate measures are put in place. Just to be clear, the experience in Arizona is that not a single asylum seeker has been sent onto the streets over the last year, by over 100,000 arriving, because of the efforts of NGOs like the International Rescue Committee, city and state government. And there's proper processing, there's effective screening, there's proper medical attention where appropriate and care for unaccompanied children, and there's transport arrangements because the vast bulk of people do have relatives in other parts of the U.S. to whom they were going to be uh, joining. And so I think that there's a very clear message from my visit, which is that you don't have to be cruel to achieve order. What you can do and what you have to do is recognize the crisis of displacement. There are responsibilities on countries like the U.S. that are well-resourced to put in place measures that do sort out those who have an effective claim from those who don't to integrate it properly and care for those who do have an asylum claim and can't go back home, and to return those who aren't able to stay. And we're seeing people leaving for reasons of desperation, violence, gang violence, poor economic conditions uh, throughout the region. That is not being abated. We had one image which was just so, so compelling of a man with an open suitcase with an infant. Uh, holding the suitcase over his head as he crossed the Rio Grande. Uh, just the, the, the humanity of that uh, cries out for solutions, David. Yes, I think you are absolutely right to say there have to be solutions both at the root in the Northern Triangle of El Salvador, Guatemala, or Honduras, and along the route in Mexico, and on the U.S. side of the border. If you only uh, work on the U.S. side of the border, you're not going to get to grips with the problem. That's why organizations like mine work in El Salvador, we work in Mexico, because the vast bulk of these uh, people, their first preference is to stay at home. If they can't stay at home because they're threatened by gangs in the way that you describe, then they have to get to safety. And there are legal, never mind moral, obligations on countries like the U.S. The people I met in Phoenix, uh, one was from a woman with children from El Salvador, uh, she'd been threatened, her children had been uh, threatened. Those are real conditions that are causing people to flee. And so there's a short-term pressure for that the U.S. has to respond to, to the symptoms of this, but obviously there are much longer-term issues that require a more thoroughgoing engagement with countries to the south. How is the rest of the world looking at the U.S.? The world has been, you know, gripped with a refugee crisis, obviously, Europe with the war in Ukraine, but uh, southern Europe as well, with refugees from, from northern Africa and sub, sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, but the they, now they see the United States in this crisis. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I, I can bring some of the expertise of the International Rescue Committee from around the world. And the truth is there's good practice and there's bad practice. There's good practice in countries like Uganda or Germany, very different countries in terms of their wealth but consistent in the way that they treat with humanity, but also with order, the people who come across the border. There's then bad practice. Uh, the UK government, I'm sad to say, is demonizing the people who are trying to get to the UK and not just processing their cases uh, far away in Uganda or try in uh, Rwanda, but tr or trying to, but actually saying they're going to send them there. There's bad practice from the UK. 
Uh, there's also some uh, practice around the world where refugees are not allowed to work. And so this is a very pivotal moment where people are looking to the U.S. for leadership. The administration is doing some very, very important and sensible measures. It's allowing people to claim asylum from outside the country. But we also believe it's vital that every gets, case gets treated on its merits, and that's not yet being done. Again, David Miliband, as always, thank you and your teams around the world for everything that you are doing.